Today we're delving deeper, coming closer to the Holy of Holies of ceramic arts, wood firing or Zaishao. I call it the Holy of Holies because many craftsmen don't want to show this production stage, especially if it's an experimental technology of some sort. Let me explain what Zaishao is, wood firing. The literal translation is firewood firing. Since ancient times it's done in different special kilns that use wood, so-called dragon ovens. There are many others, like Xie Yao, snake ovens, used in Taiwan, that are similar to dragon ovens, and so on. There are many other types of ovens, like Jing Zen ovens, and others. Later, after modernization, when new technologies appeared, they started using electric gas and coal ovens. They use different materials to fire ceramics and porcelain. Nowadays, the most widespread method is gas firing, as it's the cheapest resource, and it helps to reach the necessary temperatures. Most modern kilns work on gas or electricity. This kiln and the technician that works with it are experimental. It's interesting that he's rebuilt this kiln, making it possible to use firewood. It can work on firewood only, or firewood and gas together, as I understand. It's interesting that this oven is a kind of experimental equipment. The owners gave us permission to show it, only if we didn't show any details and features of its functioning. But the fact that it's a rebuilt kiln is a sort of know-how. We're not going to show it from inside. We will show you how the craftsman works with it and what products we can get. And I will tell you more during the process. Here you can see the results of the firing process. Here is a small batch of cups and gong dao bays, fairness cups or creamers, as they are called by many Europeans. They're made of juni clay. It looks so different. Usually it has a red color. There are many different varieties and types. It looks really different from classical juni. And as you can see, it was one batch made of the same raw material. And all colors and all cups and gong dao bays are different. It shows how color can change because of different temperatures. The result is always unpredictable. Moreover, many teapots and tea pets that are more difficult to produce are spoiled after firing. So the process is not only time consuming, it requires six to eight hours, but also results in many products with defects. This technology is very labor intensive. It requires knowledge, skill, expertise, special adjustment. As I understand it, they use both firewood and gas. So craftsmen have to understand all the nuances and details of the process. This is a collection of items that the craftsman is proud of that he doesn't want to sell. He said, I successfully made only one teapot like this, and I have only this one, it's unique. Like this one, the color, the texture, it's very unusual. Everything is special. Clay changes color in a very unpredictable way. Moreover, he uses pine wood, and its oils and resins interact with the clay. This interaction reminds me of Zhen Zhang, a similar technology. The pine firewood produces resins, and it produces very unusual and special items, and it's almost totally unpredictable. He said that he keeps these specimens and writes down for himself, like a secret, what kind of firewood he used, what temperature, what raw material, what clay, etc. Everything matters, nuances can change the results. More than that, he said, that even when conditions are the same, the same temperature, time, clay, firewood, everything, that the results can be different. All 15 products, as we've seen with these fairness cups, all are different. Here he keeps the most unusual teapots with unpredictable colors. The colors of these teapots look really different and beautiful. By the way, I've mentioned this before, 
But as it's said, repetition is the mother of wisdom. Very often, when you buy a new teapot, it has powder inside. Many people who have little experience with clay teapots think that this is something bad, some deposits. Actually, it's just a special powder that teapots, bottoms and lids are covered with to prevent them from sticking during the firing process, to prevent other parts from sticking to it, to prevent them from sticking to the parts of the stones that they stand on during firing. They look like this, small bricks. They are put inside the oven, teapots are put on them. The teapots are rotated differently to fill the maximum space in the oven. So it reminds me of a kind of puzzle that workers have to do. And all these bricks are covered with a special powder. Or they can even use a special cloth that doesn't burn. Here's a tiny piece. It looks like this. And sometimes it sticks to the teapot and has to be separated later. In the past they used powder only. Now there are many new materials that are used during the firing process. Anyway, tiny pieces like this can easily be washed away. We've returned to the kiln room. A whole day has passed. We arrived this afternoon when it was bright to show how it all looks. But the craftsmen work here in the evenings. After supper, at six o'clock, he starts the fire in the oven. It's a homemade technology. Here there is a firebox where he puts firewood in. And he holds a vacuum cleaner that blows air inside. So he controls the whole process for several hours. At least for all the time that we're here, he's sitting and holding the vacuum cleaner that has a long steel tube fixed to it. For the fire not to burn, the plastic tube of the vacuum cleaner, he's constantly blowing air inside. It really looks like some sort of homemade machine with many welded details. On the top, it has some sort of water supply. It's steaming. I don't know what it's made for. He puts pine wood in there and it produces a resinous smell. As I've said before, pine has always been used for firing, as it gives necessary patterns to the teapots and other products. The resin reacts with clay when it burns. Unusual and special patterns appear. The kiln burns until late at night. He started the fire about one and a half hours ago and he'll continue firing the pottery till it's done. And he doesn't know how long it will take. He said that he adjusts the temperature depending on the type of clay and pottery. The time differs. It shows that it's a really difficult process. I asked him how much time the full firing cycle takes. I misheard at the first time. It's not eight hours, but 48 hours, two days. Sometimes he really spends two days sitting here. I asked him if he has to be there all the time, and he said that even one minute is enough to spoil the process, so he sits here for two days without pauses. I asked him about how he sleeps. He says that maybe sometimes his son works at his place, but he usually does it without stopping. They order food here. If he needs to go to the toilet, he calls his son. That's how hard this work is. In addition, it's necessary to take care of the fire, to put no more wood than is necessary. It's not like using an electric oven that you simply need to turn on. Here, all the details of the process matter. I remembered when we were in Zhangshui in Yunnan. I was told about how they start the ovens. I hope that one day I'll have a chance to show it to you. Previously, when we came, they didn't work the kiln. Workers in Zhangshui told me that this process takes about two days too. Wood firing is not simple. Here you can see special sensors attached to the oven. They show the temperature inside the main chamber. It's 1029 degrees centigrade. That's the firing temperature. I've asked the local craftsman. He said that thanks to the vacuum cleaner for constant blowing, the process goes faster. In ancient times, when they started Gulunya ovens, it could take more than four days. That's how long it was. 
I know it takes two, or even one day, but not less than 25 or 26 hours. That's the shortest time. Moreover, when we came in the morning, he hadn't taken the pottery he was working on since yesterday from the kiln. That's what can happen with teapots during the firing process. It's absolutely unpredictable. This teapot was well made. Everything was perfect. There were no bubbles. But he misjudged the temperature, and many teapots have spoiled like this one. We can even see how the temperature affected the teapot. The clay turned black to the middle of the walls in some places, and it kept the original color of Juni inside. It's baked to the middle thanks to the wood firing process. It's very sad. It is. I said it many times. It makes wood-fired pottery more expensive. It's always an experiment. You put 20 teapots in the kiln and only five survive. It's necessary to say that the craftsman has a unique skill, as he has a rebuilt porcelain kiln. He knows how to cover Zisha clay with porcelain glaze and porcelain in general. I saw a skill like that in Yixin, but I've, I've never seen anything like what he makes. It's wonderfully done. You can see how these bamboo leaves are made, how he encrusted the clay lid with blue glaze. Working with glaze is not easy. With this teapot he's cut the image of a bamboo first, and then filled it with blue glaze. And look at this perfect teapot, nothing split. Many items usually get spoiled during the process. Moreover, the teapot itself is very unusual and I persuaded the owner to sell me three of his own teapots. They are really precious. He keeps teapots that are special and turn out to be rare as a result of the firing process. He can have four or five items and only one has a special pattern or colour. There can be no other teapots with a pattern like this. So this teapot is unique. This teapot has a particular blue shade to it. And this one was fired at an extremely high temperature, and it has almost burned. I think that this is not a defect, but a feature. Anyway, this Zhishi functions perfectly. I like this one, and I've bought this one as an example of what can happen to a teapot when it's overfired. You can see that the surface of the teapot started bubbling. It also has some resin stains, and it was baked in an unattractive way. So we got a rough teapot. You can even cut yourself in some places. Another result of wood firing. It's functional. I liked it. I will use it, but it's considered to be a defect of some sort. And defects like this are a reason why I often go to different small factories to find something like this because you can find things like this only here and not in the shops.